everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a lot of underwater backgrounds, mainly focusing on this fabulous ink pad that is in the My Monthly Hero Kit from Hero Arts for June 2022. Now while I'm focusing on something that is exclusive to a kit, if you look through your stash you might be able to create similar backgrounds with things you already have, but I really loved this ink pad in the kit along with the kit itself and the add-ons for this month. So I will be doing different backgrounds and then a few of them I'm going to turn into cards and the rest of the backgrounds I'll save for future cards. Now here is a look at the kit this month. I absolutely love creating underwater scenes, anything underwater. And for this month in the kit, you're getting this large six by eight stamp set, coordinating dies, a water flow brush, some self-adhesive pearls, and that amazing ink pad. This ink pad is actually an all-in-one ink pad, and it's using colors that are already available at Hero Arts. It's just putting them all in one ink pad, which makes it really fun for creating backgrounds. I wanted to give you a closer look at the stamp set, which I like to keep in the Hero Arts large storage pockets. I'm really loving these to keep my stamps safe from dust and dog hair. So you can see we have this large, beautiful mermaid image along with coordinating images to build up a scene. And this is a look at that ink pad. Now what's special about this ink pad is not only how all the colors are combined in one, but instead of felt pads, which is normally what you see, it is foam, which is great for doing some ink smushing techniques, which is what I'm going to start with. I'm starting on this slick surface because it is great for ink smushing versus a glass mat. I just squished that down onto the surface and then I'm spritzing it with water and I also spritzed my heavy stock cardstock with water. So when I squish this into the ink, we have this gorgeous array of color on the background. You could also take that water flow brush and actually paint onto your cardstock as well, which would give it a more soft and pastel look. So I'll set this off on the side to dry and show you another way that you can use this. And I am bringing out one of my favorite tools for creating backgrounds, and that is the jelly plate. Now with this jelly plate, I'm also going to bring in a couple background stamps, which are add-ons to this month, which is the antique hero map, super awesome. And the deep sea background, wait till you see the words on this hero map stamp set. It is so cool. I love it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this ink pad and I am going to smoosh it across my jelly plate. So you can see we have this separation of color. So I'm going to turn my ink pad so that those colors line up. So there's that, I think it's berry smoothie. I have them lined up together. Then I'm taking my brayer and I'm going to brayer over that ink just to kind of smooth this out, kind of create a gradual transition of color. Then I'm going to take one of the bold prints. Now for this one, I'm going to use that deep sea bold print. And I'm going to stamp this right into that ink that I have. This is just one of my favorite ways to do these backgrounds with the bold prints because I get such great coverage and it leaves such a unique impression. So I'm going to just press that down and I can lift it up. I'm going to set that off on the side because there's ink on that that we can use. Then I'm taking a piece of deluxe white cardstock. I'm going to place that down on my jelly plate, put a piece of copy paper over the top so I can really push down and pick up that ink. And then once I pick up this background, we have a really great impression of that deep sea bold print. Now you can see this is very light. It is a great impression, but I wanted to kind of deepen up those colors in the background a little bit. So I'm going to repeat those same steps of smushing this down onto that jelly plate and brayering those colors. Now in between, I do brayer off onto a scratch piece of paper just so I can kind of start fresh. And then I'm going to bring in my paper not the stamp set yet, but I just want to build up my color in the background to try and make that a little bit darker. So I'm going to repeat all of those steps. I actually do this about two times, I think it is, and each time just building up that color. Now, any one of these poles would make a great background, and I do actually do a couple of them separately off screen just to have on hand if I want to do something else to it. So this is going to be pole number two, just kind of placing my cardstock in about the same position that scratch paper to pick up the ink. And now we have this beautiful background. So here is number three. Now this time I'm going to take that deep sea stamp again and stamp this down into that ink, just making sure I kind of push down. It doesn't slide, so you don't have to worry about it sliding. And now I'm bringing in my layered up ink cardstock, placing that down over the top. Now you're gonna see that this one is a little more subtle. It's not as dark of an impression as I kind of had thought it would be. 
but it's still really good impression. Kind of hard to see on camera, but it does look really neat in person. So here's a look at both of those backgrounds side to side. And now remember, we had some ink left over on the stamp. So I'm placing another piece of cardstock over that, just plain white cardstock, pressing that down into the stamp. So kind of stamping that. And now this one is very light. So that is another impression that you can get. Now I'm going to do some stamping with that Antique Hero Arts map, which is just a really fun stamp set. And I'm placing that into my Misty tool. I removed the foam insert because this is already foam mounted. And this is a background I just kind of brayered on some color with. So I added some repositionable adhesive to the back. And then I can place this over my map stamp where I want the, the cardstock to be because there are words on here, which you'll see in just a moment. So I close the door or the back of my Misty to pick up that cardstock and now it's stuck in place if I want to stamp it again. Now another favorite of mine is taking my rubber brayer and I am inking up that brayer on that ink pad by just rolling my brayer in the ink pad and then rolling over the background stamp. This has been one of my new favorite ways to ink up a background stamp. So I'm closing the door of the Misty. I'm pushing down on that really good over that background and check that out. It is just I absolutely love this. I was so excited for it. We have Infinity Shallows. We have Heroes Landing. I mean, such really cool words on here for this map. I'm going to do another background here. This time, this is using one of my ink smushed backgrounds. So I just kind of went over that with my heat tool to make sure it was really dry. And this time, I'm using that deep sea background. Now, this one comes out really cool because we can't really line up the colors from the background to the ink pad. So just watch what happens. I picked up that ink with the rubber brayer going over the stamp set or the background stamp with that brayer. And then I'm going to stamp this down. And because we can't really line up the colors because it's ink smushing, it's very natural. When I stamp that down, we have that kind of dark color. I know pink and it just looks very neon, very, I don't know, just really awesome. So I'm going to do this one more time, except for this time, I'm going to do it on just plain white cardstock. So if you ever have trouble stamping a large background stamp, Give this rubber brayer technique a try. I'm going to bet you will love it. So here it is. I'm going to stamp it down. Now, this is just one application of ink, and you can see it's going to give you a pretty good result. Now, if you want to deepen that up or kind of fill in some of those areas, you can do it one more time. Stamp that down. And now our background is a little bit brighter. So just a couple different ways that you can use that technique. Now, taking one of those backgrounds where I did that deep sea bold print in the background, I'm going to add some images to this using the Mermaid Cove stamp set, which is kind of like a silhouette stamp set. I'm inking this up in the intense black ink, and I don't completely finish this card on screen, but I will show you at the end a similar card I created using this stamp set. There are a few images on this stamp set, including this one that I'm using now. There's also some seaweed. There is a mermaid and a couple schools of fish, a larger one and a smaller one. And I'm just going around kind of the bottom and the bottom edge of the cardstock to add these kind of silhouette images to it. Now, here is just a small school of fish and my mermaid that I just could not resist using. So after I finish stamping these down, I'll give you a look at a card that I'll be sharing over on my blog. This one is using the Tide Stencil and the Swirling Border, I believe it's called. I also brought in just some different colors of inks. These are the inks that are part of that mermaid ink palette. It's just a different color spectrum. Now for one of my cards that I'm going to ple complete for you on camera, I stamped out the images from the My Monthly Hero Kit for June 2022. So I have the mermaid here, the coral, some seagrass, and the clam with the pearl in it. I stamped it all on deluxe white cardstock with intense black ink so it is Copic friendly. And then I'm coming in with my Copic markers to quickly color this in. Now I am using my Copic markers, but this would be a really great image to even just stamp on one of those plain blended backgrounds that we created. So it really looks like she's underwater. You could also use that water flow brush and smush down that ink pad and do some water coloring with the image too. This is great for any type of coloring medium. I absolutely love how much flowing hair she has. It's just a really great vocal image for your card front, or I'm going to kind of put mine on the side of the card so that I have room to show the rest of my background. But this is such a fun image to either color up if you do love coloring, or like I said, if you want to do techniques, you could stamp it right onto your background to give it that full underwater scene. So here I'm coming in with some dark browns to give her some dark brown hair. 
I did do a different color combo that you can view on my countdown post over on my blog as well. With coloring in the hair, I really didn't pay attention to if there's lines overlapping. I mean, I did try and add in some areas, but you don't have to get real precise. I just pretty much took my darkest color, added it to the top of the head, and then also to the ends of the hair. And my highlight area, which is the E74, is going to be in the middle of her hair. After I color in the main portion of her hair, I, I kind of caught my eye that I missed a part down by her tail. So I am going to come in and fill that in as well. After I finish with the hair, I'm going to do the mermaid tail. And for that, I'm going to bring in some BGs of my Copic marker. These are some really nice teal colors that I thought would tie in nicely with the background because of the mermaid color palette that we used. Now, so this video doesn't get too long, I am going to do the remaining images off screen. I'll color those in with my Copic markers. Now, one thing I wanted to point out that I did on the mermaid that I thought really kind of made it so unique was I took my lightest BG marker here and I added it to the lips and to the top of the eyes like eyeshadow. And I thought that was just such a unique look. Now, after everything is colored, I am taking the coordinating dies, holding them down with a low tack tape, and I'll die cut those out. I'm going to be adding my mermaid to this background where I used the antique hero map on the background. And for this, I'm using a sentiment off of Mermaid Wishes. Now, I am bringing in this grid transparency to make sure that I have this lined up because I put a lot of work into that background and I loved how it looked, so I didn't want to ruin it by having my sentiment stamped crooked. So I'm stamping this on that grid transparency. Once I know that it's lined up really straight, I can just wipe that off, remove the transparency, and then I can stamp my sentiment right down onto my background using the intense black ink. Once I have that stamped, I'm going to add some foam squares behind my mermaid and attach this to the front of the card kind of off on the side. So I will trim off any excess that is hanging off. And then to add a little bit of detail to the mermaid, I brought in my white jelly roll pen and I started off by adding just some lines for highlights. But then as I was doing that and I kind of added in a few dots here and there, I really liked how the dotted look was looking. So I'm going to take my gel pen. I'm really going to add little dots all over her hair. I don't know what provoked me to really just do this. It was kind of scary because I did put in a lot of time to coloring the image, but I absolutely love how this came out. It was just a really unique look to go with a unique image. I'll finish this up and then I'll give you a look at the finished card. I am loving, I said, I'm really loving this mermaid image and that hero uh, antique map in the background. Just Two of my favorite things out of the release this month. For the next card that I'm going to make, I'm using some of those elements from the My Month Hero Kit. So I have the coral and also that seagrass. And I have a piece of just thin white cardstock that I'm stamping my sentiment on. And I'm going to leave just kind of a small opening. So I'm using that kind of crazy background that I created where it looks like it's glowing in the background. So I have a strip of white at the top and a strip at the bottom that I'm adding to the front of the card with foam tape. And then I'm going to attach that seagrass and coral reef. So you don't always have to use the images all together. You can use them separately. I love the sentiment. You are one of a kind. I think these are just really great. And just having that small area of the background, it's not overpowering you. And now just for some fun, I'm bringing in the white hero pearls and adding that kind of around my image. So that'll finish off that card for you. So there are a bunch of ideas that you can use to create underwater backgrounds using some of these items from the kit and also from the add-ons this month from Hero Arts. I hope this video has inspired you to create all these kind of great backgrounds. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Here are a few other videos I think you might enjoy.